Now, it's none of my business how you spend your money. It's your money. If you want a remote antenna tuner, that's your decision. Nothing wrong with it. But they're a waste of money and not necessary. Now, perhaps there are some legitimate technical reasons for having a remote tuner, a tuner that operates at the antenna, not on your desktop. But before you spring for that remote tuner, I'd like you to think about a few things. I believe that sales of remote antenna tuners are driven by the false idea that your SWR must be as close to one as possible. Many hams believe that a desktop tuner only provides the transmitter with a good match, but between the tuner and the antenna, it's a vast wasteland. Lots of power being wasted because the line has standing waves. Now, in the HF bands with good quality coax, this is generally false. Most hams do not understand what a desktop antenna tuner actually does. That is, a tuner at the source, not at the load. They do not realize that a simple desktop tuner tunes the entire antenna system to residence. That includes the coax transmission line and the antenna. Note this from antenna engineer Walt Maxwell, W2DU, in his acclaimed book, Reflections, Transmission Lines, and Antennas. Now here he addresses some misconceptions and myths. We'll start reading right here. He tells us that with a transmatch, which is just another name for an antenna tuner, number one, only feed line tuning is accomplished. This is not true. The antenna is also tuned. Number two, antenna system performance is increased only when the transmatch is located at the antenna feed point. Not true. That's the whole basis of remote antenna tuner. Number three, we are providing a proper load only for the transmitter and not improving the antenna system efficiency. Also not true. And the whole, again, the whole idea of being, or rather of using a remote antenna tuner. And he concludes here, many amateurs avoid using a transmatch because they misunderstand these points. And that's also why many hams believe that a remote antenna tuner is superior to a desktop tuner. Now, if you have any questions about Walt Maxwell's qualifications, I've posted his background in the description of this video. Now let's examine further the amazing capabilities of a simple desktop tuner that you are not taking advantage of with a remote tuner. Here is a diagram from Maxwell's book. Here we have a, it's actually a tank circuit for a tube amp, but it's the same thing as an antenna tuner for a solid state transmitter. Now note what we have from here to here. From the input of the tuner here to the antenna, we have a overall impedance transformer. And I would add a variable impedance transformer. What does an impedance transformer do? By definition, an impedance transformer matches the impedance of a source to the impedance of a load, maximizing power transfer. So by changing the values of the inductor and the capacitors in the tuner, 
we can change this transformer to any value we need for full power transfer to the antenna. A coax transmission line with standing waves has an infinite number of impedances and that can be changed by a tuner to the value needed for full power transfer from the transmitter to the antenna. But you're still not going to have an SWR of 1 on the coax line with a desktop tuner. True. But the idea that you have to have an SWR of 1 is the biggest myth in ham radio. Let's see why. Let's use this uh, coax calculator. And let's select a good quality coax cable commonly used by hams, RG213. Let's take 100 feet of it. Let's put it on the 20-meter uh, band. SWR of 1, perfect match, like if you're using a you know remote antenna tuner, and you're putting out 100 watts. So let's see how much loss we have. So even with a perfect match, you're going to have a total loss of about 0.7 dB, not quite 1 dB, all right? So let's, let's keep that in mind. Even with a perfect match, you're not going to have 100 watts making it to your antenna. Now let's put some uh, standing waves on this line. Let's say 4 to 1. Now certainly with a modern transceiver, you're not going to be operating into a 4 to 1 SWR because the transceiver will start to power down. You're going to have to have either a desktop tuner or a remote uh, a tuner or something to uh, give you a better uh, standing wave ratio for the transmitter. Now let's see how much additional loss we have because we have an SWR of 4 to 1. So the additional SWR loss caused by a, a 4 to 1 SWR is actually less than the match loss, uh, 0.6 dB. So total loss is now 1.4 dB, power out uh, 72.5 watts. Now keep in mind that an S unit is 6 decibels. So this, your total loss, even with an SWR of 4 to 1, is only a fraction of one S unit. So if your SWR in 20 meters is too high for your liking, there may be something wrong with your antenna system, or you're just using the wrong antenna. You got, like you're trying to work 20 meters with a 10-meter dipole. Don't blame the SWR. It's some other problem. You probably don't need a remote tuner. Just use a more suitable antenna for the band you're trying to work, and you're going to have a better signal with the right antenna. So my point is, do you really need an expensive remote tuner that requires electricity to operate, sits out in the weather, making it like some wives and girlfriends, high maintenance. Before long, you're going to have bugs living in it, water damage, and so on. Now, true, a real high-quality desktop tuner is also going to be expensive, like this beauty. But unless you run high power, you don't need to spend nearly that much. I just don't like seeing people being misled, and I believe ham should have a basic knowledge of what really happens in an antenna system and what an antenna tuner really does, and there is a sad lack of knowledge in that area. Consider subscribing to this channel and 73.